Hello, YouTube, and also Eric Rosen Raiders. Uh, I played in the Colorado Clothes like a month ago. And I haven't analyzed some of the games on stream yet. But shockingly, it was the three losses. Um, oh, and I guess I guess it was only two losses and a draw, but it's not high quality games. Uh, a lot of a lot of blunders, um, but I guess that makes the comebacks better? I don't know. Um, so round one I was paired with um, a 2150, I believe. Um, and I knew my colors ahead of the time, ahead of, ahead of time, because uh, it's a round robin and you know your pairings. So I prepared for a King's Indian because I had played him before. Um, and, and basically, the way he plays the King's Indian, it's just he just he doesn't play specific lines. He just does it really weird, like not horrible, just very strange. He just plays it in a very weird way. So I didn't really know what to expect. I also don't have a great memory of what I was thinking during these games because again, it was a month ago. But I will try. Yes, the chat is included in the YouTube video. So if you want to be in the YouTube, say hi YouTube right now. Or something. Okay, so King's Indian, G3 King's Indian, not a Catalan, as some people might might have you think. Um, and I know I say this every time, but the reason we're playing Knight C3 here instead of Knight F3 to Castle is because, in case of C6, I want to be able to play E4, because this C6 followed by Bishop F5 is a thing, and I don't want them to do that. So. That's one of the reasons why we play knight c3 first, and I don't have that option here, because he takes me. So knight c3 castles, knight f3, and these arrows are from the commentators, because I actually streamed the games live. I think the VODs are still up, if you want to watch them. But, okay, castle, e5, e4. And I had this position against um, Grandmaster um, Sam Cannon, or Zanon, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, and oh boy, was that a rough game. I learned a lot of things, though, from it. Thanks for the, for the subscription, the gifted subscription from Stripey Boy. Uh, hello, Sale Smith. Um, everyone in the YouTube comments, please say hello to Sale Smith so that he can be the center of attention as usual. Yes, Seaman can. Anyway, uh, okay, so that game went, I mean, maybe I'll link the video, but basically, you know, I play h3, rookie, rookie one, and he played this this a6 move, which is, which is, you know, a little weird. And then he played h6. And the point of h6 is to prevent b4. Um, and if you want to know why, then you have to watch that video. But that's I thought that was like the deepest shit I've, I'd ever experienced in a game, and it blew my fucking mind. Obviously, I didn't figure that out over the board, because I'm a 1900, basically. Um, but that was a hot game by Mr. Seaman Cannon. Um, but, but, but my opponent took... Took on d4, and then he he played a6, did he? h3, okay. I don't remember this happening. I thought he played this at some point, but maybe I'm wrong. Rook e8, rook e1, and we're looking to transpose, maybe, into the line. Um, and then he played rook b8. So it's I, I, it's kind of weird, because he, he could still play knight c5 at some point. Um, the, the reason... That h6 prevents b4, by the way, is it gives a square for the knight on g5. Um, crazy. So it makes more sense to play b3 in that position. So I played rook b1 because it felt flexible to me. Um, I could play b3, I could play b4. Uh, if he plays knight c5 right away, I can play b4 and play bishop e3. And this is the point. We play b4 to block the rook so we can develop our bishop. However, if h6 is in uh, here, knight g5 is a move. 
forking our H3 pawn and our E pawn, and we're losing! Okay. But, uh, he didn't- did he do that? No, he played- he played C5, alright? C5? This move is bad. And dumb. And so I, I remember being surprised to see it, because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, it's- alright, you're just committing to having a weak D pawn. You're giving me the d5 square, and b5 will not will not happen because I'll just play a4. Um, I think I yeah I chose knight c2. Um, knight f3 I think is equally good, but I was I don't know I thought maybe this would happen at some point. It might be a thing. So knight c2 made sense to me. Okay, and if b5 right away, I have queen takes d6. So he has to prepare it. So he plays queen c7, preparing b5. And then I think I had a very long think here. And I foregore to play a4. <clears throat> yeah. This was this game I made a lot of very, very bad moves. Um, and unfortunately, I won't be redeeming myself today by looking at my wins. Because I already looked at that. But you can watch, watch it here. Yeah, I foregore. Um, so a4 and white is much better. But I think I had a, a long think here, and then I played knight e3, so I was like, I'm getting my knight in there. My knights will be good. And I didn't see what he was doing about this. When he played b5, I was like, oh fuck. Uh, and then I'm a little upset because I just didn't see this. Like, I knew it was a thing, but because it was- I prevented it the last move, I forgot- I foregore- I was like, queen c7 looks dumb. I don't think it does anything. All it does is make the d5 square look more enticing, but I foregore that- there was a point to it and then and then i and then i didn't play a4 can you run an ad break please uh yes well white is still a little bit better here that's that's how weird what he's done is it's just i would have been much better if i just played a4 and prevented all counterplay um this move is not the best uh here i should just play b3 um which i guess it makes sense I, I don't remember exactly what I was worried about with this. Uh, maybe just knight e5, and I was like, what's the point? Because I didn't understand how I was hanging on to everything. If I play f4, he plays knight c6 to d4, and then his whole position, I felt, was justified. So I didn't like this. Um, I thought I had to- I, I was a little upset that I allowed this, and I was like, alright, if he's- if I'm allowing him play, I need to- I need to also have play. So I attacked his queen, and he saw it, so he took my knight. And then I put another one on d5. And this is way- this is way too good for him. I mean, this is too much. I allowed too much. He still has the weak d-pawn to worry about. I'm not, like, that- I don't really care if he takes here. I feel like I'm gonna pick it up at some point. Uh, I can play bishop f4. If I trade the dark squared bishops, I don't know what the evaluation would be. I was going to claim that I did, but I don't. Um, it would make sense to me because he has weaknesses around his king, but I think he can just trade this knight off in that case, and maybe his bishop is better than mine, actually. So he plays queen d8, and yes, he has one good piece, and I have one good piece. And the rest of our pieces are just kind of sitting there, waiting to activate. Uh, I took on b5, which is, I mean, technically the best move, but my follow-up was not perfect. Um, a move like h4 is also just fine, like making a square for the bishop and trying to get out with tempi. You know, I could play h5 at some point too. You know, maybe even h6 if I'm feeling really crazy. And this bishop sucks. I guess. But I took and I played b4, and my point was that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just like dissolve his good pawns and leave him with his stupid one. And after c4 I have a4, and I'm just trying to break everything apart so that it's- I'm just basically trying to fix my mistakes. Um, however, here- my position kind of sucks, because I don't get to keep my knight. He has this past pawn that if I don't take, I'm just worse. So I have to find a way to do something about that. 
Um, I still haven't developed this. I mean, I, technically I have a pass pawn, but it doesn't feel super threatening. Yeah, this game was weird. I was playing weird. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm really trying to remember the thought process, but I just can't. Like, it was just fucking, I was on crack or something. This looks so equal. Well, George, you would be incorrect, um, as usual. Thanks for the Twitch Prime, by the way. So, this is a bad move. I'm surprised it's only dubious. I thought it was a blunder. And I don't, I don't remember the line of thinking, but I do remember that I completely missed, uh, something here. I don't remember what it was. So, this is fan really great, great content. Um... Bishop e3 is a normal chess move, or bishop f4 is a normal chess move. This is crazy and stupid. Um, now the problem here is that, he, okay, he takes it, I take it, and then he takes my knight, and he did that, which is bad, but if he just takes on e1, and uh, bishop e5, he can't play f4 because queen g3 or something, I think is the problem. It's opposite colored bishops, but that might mean I get attacked. Um, I don't- I don't- this- this- like, this move justifies what I did. I thought that even this rook was better, but I- I don't remember why. Or no, it's not. That hangs a rook, that's why. Maybe I'm thinking of a different position. But okay, so- so why is this so bad? Are we- oh, we're playing queen d2, escorting the pawn, and we can probably take on g3 and I'm getting made it? That sounds right. So these, okay, opposite colored bishops are often uh, draws, but when queens are on the board, you can get attacked because half of your squares are very weak and your opponent controls all of the squares that you don't. So I don't know if that made sense, but like even a move like queen d2 here, um, bishop e5 makes more sense, but I'm getting, I'm going to get a tempo on this rook. I'm going to be shoving my, my pawn. And your dark squares are going to be weak, and my bishop is just looking at a pawn. It's just terrible. So this is what my opponent should have done. I guess it wasn't as bad of a move as I thought, if he has to understand that. Um, I, I do think that this move is just, like, weird. Because you're just leaving the, the open file. And then looking at your pawn. When I was going to have to move my queen at some point anyway, probably. Uh, no, rook d doesn't- it, it was, like- minus two here for black and then it was uh now it's like minus 0.7 so i would say it kind of ruined the winning advantage black is still better um here i should play queen g4 try and trade the queens and if he doesn't trade the queen i take the c pawn um i did not consider this i mean i don't remember much about this game but i know that i didn't consider queen g4 so that was a skill issue uh, queen a4, maybe maybe keeping an eye on the e8 square is useful. I don't know. Um, but now he's just chasing my, my queen around for no reason. Again, he should attack the dark squares, like bishop d4 or something. And I have a lot of problems here, dealing with this and with this whole situation here. Um, I don't remember the exact time situation, but I know that by the end I had like two minutes and he had 45, but this is normal for me. This was definitely my worst game of uh, the last 10 years, actually, so you haven't even seen the worst part yet. So I'll just stay tuned for that shit. Um, okay, but this is like, I mean, I play queen c2 and it's like, am I even that much worse anymore? Because I'm yeah, queens are not good blockaders, but at least something's in front of the pawn. Um, and I am defending my dark squares now. So like, he kind of like forced my queen to go to a better square. It was very bad on d7 because it was just not helping. So um, then c3 is to follow, which uh, is a good move, but it was one I wasn't like too upset to see because it kind of blocks his bishop. A little bit. I thought it might be a little premature. Um, I thought something like rook c8 would be better, but uh, I was wrong. So it is true that I have a lot of. If he can double and and get to a2 with his rooks, yeah, I'm lost, out of focus. The camera doesn't want to be a part of this game. There you go. Okay, so I have problems. 
this shit, and then this plan is horrible. Uh, I played Rookie 2, just because I was worried about my uh, second rank here, I assume. Um, but, okay, Rookie 8, he, he's trying to get my queen out from under the pawn, uh, or just trade pieces so it's harder for me to defend, I guess. Um, Bishop e4 is the best move here, which looks very weird to me. I mean, I, gu I guess my position is so bad I have to make a move like this, but it just felt loose. Like, it just looks weird and loose. Like, all my pieces are... Like, I, I, if one one person stops doing their job, then everything falls apart. Uh, it's just a bad position, so I guess I understand. Um, I played rookie one, which is not so good. After rook takes e2... Rook takes e2. Now he goes here. But actually, rook a1 is just winning. Because after king h2, bishop e5. I'm in sort of a bind here. Can't really move any of my pieces. Classic engine. And f4, by the way, f4 is not possible because of this is checkmate. So, um, in case anyone was wondering about that. The king is gimped. The queen is gimped. The rook is... Uh, just watching from the chair in the corner. And uh, I have a B-pawn, but, I mean, the position is, is horrendous. He's going to put something on C1, probably a queen, maybe a rook, um, threatening to checkmate me if I do not trade queens. Um, and if I do trade queens, then he wants to push his pawn forward. So, I could have resigned if this happened. But, instead, he took and played bishop d4, because he wants to take my g3 pawn. Um, and I saw it. Uh, but queen d3 is a bad move. I should play king h2 and be a lot worse, but instead I play queen d3, maybe, and now I'm slightly more a lot worse. Because this undefended the c1 square for the queen, um, and the computer likes this move, followed by... <sighs> Bishop f6. It looks weird, but if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense, especially knowing those other variations we looked at, where the point was to get the queen on c1. Um, f6 is maybe a weird square, but we're doing this, and then you're gonna resign. I mean, that's, that's just kind of how it's gonna go. Um, okay. And this happened. This all happened. This all happened? Really? <laughs> I don't remember this. I was under time pressure here, so I was not thinking too much about these moves. Um, queen a3. M my hope is that if I can just just get really, really good c control over the light squares, then like I maybe can hold because it's opposite colored bishops was the hope. Um, this move is a chess move that I played apparently. Moving on. Um, yeah, I, what was the point of this? Oh, I just defended my b-pawn, okay. Yeah, but then he goes there and I have to defend both. Bishop e4 does this. Rook a1, I give a check. And then I take on d6. And now it is black to play and win. My position is hanging on by a thread. Uh, queen b1 is also winning, but queen b1 I play h4 and it's not immediately winning. It's kind of weird. I kind of figured I was just lost here, but I also- the reason I take on d6 is because if he- if he doesn't find, like, the best move here, <laughs> like, I might have winning chances with my past d-pawn, like, if he really fucks this up. Um... Rook a2, I just take it, and then I play this move, or this move even better. And then what? Like, you're, you're like, might be losing? This was my point, though. This is, this is tough. This is, uh, this is a tough position. So this is a practical choice to take this, this pawn. Um, so, alright. What is, what is holding the position together? Barely. It's this bishop on e4. And he is the reason that I'm not dead. Bishop h4? Uh, incorrect. I don't, know, I don't know what you want me to say about bishop h4. So, we want to do two things at once. We want to do something about this bishop, and we also want to make a threat. 
So yes, correct. Queen c4, eyeing the f1 square and the bishop on e4. And now, like, what the hell do I do? If I move off this diagonal, then queen d3. And my queen is very, very stupid, so I cannot do anything and this rook is trapped. Uh, if I do anything else, <laughs> this is... Well, I mean, yeah, how do you defend this? I don't know. You play queen f4, I play rook e1. And again, like, you're just losing a piece, at least. Um, bishop g2 here, again, queen d3, and while the queen is closer to the rook, it's not any any closer to actually defending it. It's pretty sick. Um, rook c1, you can do now, but just c2, the game is over. So my opponent didn't see that, because it's a hard position. Um... My opponent played queen b1 instantly, going in for the checkmate, um, which is a natural move. But if this is what annoys me about people who play instantly in classical chess, because if he had taken like five minutes, he probably would have seen queen c4. Uh, queen b1, I, I'm only minus five. Uh, h4 is forced. I need a flight square because he was threatening mate. And then he plays rook a4. So, see if you can find the way to keep the winning advantage here. Because there's only one way to do it after queen b1. <laughs> yes, only. h5 is very interesting, George, because you're taking away um, the second flight square. But what's your, what's your threat, really? Like, queen g1, king h3. You still can't play here. I mean, this bishop is, like... Way too dank. Um, queen e1, something like queen f4, I guess. It, honestly, I'm I'm gonna pre-move queen f4 no matter what you do, um, because I want to push my pawn and defend my best piece. All right, so I'll give you a hint. What was what was the winning move in the previous position? It was queen c4. Go, figure it out. Pause the video here if you're a YouTuber. I mean a YouTube viewer. Not if you're a YouTuber. Not you, CL Smith. Check, check, queen c4, yeah. Queen g1, king h3, queen f1, king h2, queen c4, bam! And then we, we fixed our mistake. The only difference is now h4 is in. And the problems are all the same. Queen f4, I have rook e1. So that's pretty that's pretty neat. But he did not see that in the game because he was playing quickly, so he just kind of gave up after h4, which is weird because what did he think I was going to play? I didn't have an option, so I just- I think that's weird. Um, so rook a4 and it's equal! I did it! How to equalize? It's only one way to do it. He's attacking my pawn. Which is not good. H5. And now, again, we see the, the theme, pattern, whatever, of opposite colored bishops attacking whatever. Okay? Now I'm the one attacking. But now his queen is so stupid on b1. Look at it. It's dumb. Um, so the defensive move is an attacking move, though, George. So the threat is h6. This is where it all went to shit. I know it was all- the game was shit. Yeah, I played h5. Uh, with my- my point being h6, okay? That was the point. But then I had a senior moment. I will give- this was the- it was the first- listen. I- I- I really- I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. I feel like this is just like a really bad introduction to me as a person. <laughs> like, this is my most embarrassing moment of the past, like, ten years of my life, okay? I have, like, two minutes, or maybe three, and I was like... <sighs> I just survived an insane, deadly attack. A draw's not good enough for me, though. I want to win. My future chess boxing partner. How tall are you? You said capper earlier, though. Um, I'm five foot eight. How tall are you? All right. Well, hold on, though. I think I played the worst move possible on the board, but it was based on um, correct 
ca- calculation and evaluation if not for the move that he played. I am. How tall are you? What's your wingspan? So, so h6, okay? King takes h6. Queen takes f6. Um, and then he takes my bishop. And I was like, ah. I take here. He plays, like, this move? Looked a little bit scary to me. Um, but I can just play rook f3 or queen f3. But I looked at this and I was like, this is really groveling for a draw. I mean, with, with two minutes left, he's gonna take my d-pawn. His king is weak. I mean, but in my head I was like, oh, but like, if I could play for a win here with my d-pawn and his weak king, then why wouldn't I? Worst move was queen e5. No, actually, my move is worse than queen e5. My move is worse than queen e5. Okay? So I spent the, the remainder of my time here thinking, oh, but, but I might have an intermezzo here. Before I play h6, why don't I just take on g6 and after he recaptures, then play h6 and I've won a pawn because he's, you know, he's going to take my bishop at the end anyway, right? And then I spent a long time thinking about, like, which pawn he's going to take with. And, um, I ended up playing it. <coughs> because I don't think it ever occurred to me that my queen was under attack. Like, I don't, I don't remember. I think I blocked it out, honestly. I don't know if I foregore. I don't know if I never knew. But listen, this evalu- Listen, if, if he can't take my queen, this is a brilliant move, okay? Because if he takes this way, he's he's worse, all right? I actually have winning chances here. This is a much improved version, okay? All right? I want this to be very clear. It was not based on nothing. Uh, if he takes with the h-pawn, still h6, and, and this is just, you know, I just won a pawn, and he's not going to hang on to the c-pawn, okay? And now I'm the one with winning chances. But, 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 but then... You know the crazy part? Usually when you make a hideous blunder like this, you see it right after you move, but I didn't. I like I like played that move and like people were looking at me weird and I was like, what? It's a good move. Why are you looking at me? And then he like fought for a while and he just like took my queen and and, and I was like, okay, I I didn't I what? I didn't see that. That's not fair. So anyway, that was the worst game I've ever played. So I'm glad that you all enjoyed looking at it. Uh, you can tell that I I put off looking at this game for a month for a reason. I won a pawn. I did win a pawn. If he doesn't take the hanging queen, I just I don't know. I can't even begin to explain my thought process because I don't understand why I wouldn't see that. Like I don't. It was probably because I I, I like in all of the lines I looked at with h6. They're forcing lines, and my queen ends up on f6 anyway. Um, and then it was an afterthought to try and throw in bishop g6. And at the end of all these lines, my queen is not hanging. And then I was like, oh, but bishop g6. Anyway. For some reason, bishop Stockfish says bishop takes g6 as a blunder. Yeah. Like, the thing is, though, I've been making so many blunders lately. At this point, I had been making so many blunders over the board that I was just like... I mean, I couldn't believe that I did it, because that's obviously the worst blunder I've ever made. But at this point, it's like, I just don't understand why it's happening. Just don't get it. Um, okay, but then round two, I played. That was one game that I played on Friday. The second game is already up on my YouTube channel, um, where I played just a very nice game, start to finish. Like I just, just it was just a nice Catalan, like no mistakes. I just kind of played every move well. The commentator said if I didn't play the move they wanted, I played one that was better. So I won that game.